Today, we are talking about the DJI Digital FPV system, and we're going to take a deep dive into how the actual radio system on the FPV system works. Now, we're not talking here about the DJI FPV drone. We're talking about the FPV ear unit, which is the DJI one, which I've got in there, the FPV goggles, version one or two, and the DJI FPV remote. And what we're going to do is take a closer look at the behavior of this on a portable spectrum analyzer. Now, AIM-TTI have very kindly lent me this 6 gigahertz analyzer to allow me to actually be able to make this video and show you how this system behaves. Having spent some time with this, I can tell you up front that there is some really interesting differences in how this system works in 25 megabits mode, 50 megabits mode and what the system does when you first power it on. So what we're going to do in this video is walk you through each of those steps one at a time, show you it in action and talk about its behavior to give you guys a better idea of how this system actually works and hopefully improve how you use this system, especially when flying around other users. Now, just before we jump into it, I want to say if you're interested in seeing more content like this, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links to Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description too. Also, very quickly, I want to say a big thank you to AIM TTI for lending me this scope. And I'll talk a bit more about that at the end of the video because there will be some more content coming up on that product specifically in the future as well. Anyway, let's get on with this video and let's take a closer look at how the radio system on the DJI FPV system actually works. Works. Okay, so what we're going to do is walk through various steps to show you the radio system in action and how it behaves. We're going to first of all take a look at it in 25 megabits mode. We're then going to take a look at it in 50 megabits mode. And then we're, then we're going to spend a little bit of time just looking at power on because there's some really interesting behavior at that point as well. Now, the setup we've obviously got is the FPV drone. We've got a remote controller and we've got the set of goggles. This obviously is not the DJI FPV drone. It is the FPV ear unit. And I'm using the standard DJI ear unit for this one, but it is exactly the same on the Vista. I've got my scope set up and you're next to it, you can see a camera and I'm gonna show that on the screen in a minute so you guys can see in real time what I'm seeing as I power this up so I can walk you through its behavior. Now, just before we do that, I just wanna explain how this system actually communicates. The FPV system, transmits HD video from the ear unit to the goggles via an OFDM video signal. The goggles communicate with the ear unit via a telemetry link and the remote controller communicates with both the goggles and the ear unit via a telemetry link. These three talk as basically a network when they're connected and then the video is transmitted back to the goggles themselves. So the interesting thing about this is the difference in behavior in the modes because it is different in 25 meg mode compared to 50. And I'll walk you through that in a minute. And it actually explains a lot of the problems people have when flying next to other users. So what we're gonna do first of all is put it up on the display so you can see the scope up on the screen. And we've set it to start at 5,700 up to 5,950. And then what you've got is two bars here, which are representing channel eight. And the reason I'm representing channel eight, because it's important to understand the behavior difference between 25 meg and 50 meg with regards to the remote and telemetry link. And those bars will help us do that. Now, what we're going to do, first of all, is power the system on and show you it in 25 megabits mode and show you what the system actually does. So the first thing we're going to do is power on the goggles. And just to show you, power on the, on the goggles really does nothing on the band. We're going to put it in normal mode, wait for the goggles to power on. And as you can see on the display, there really is nothing going on. There is no major packets of information being sent. There is no interference. There is literally nothing. So powering on the goggles alone will not send out any great big signals. It will not affect users around you, or at least it shouldn't. The same should stand for the remote controller as well. When you power this on, literally there is no communication. The remote and the goggles do not talk to each other when they are both on without the ear unit. The ear unit has to be turned on for the system to actually kick in and to begin to communicate. So what we're gonna do now is power up the ear unit. And the first thing you will then see 
is the system actually appear on the display between the two lines. You can now see that the carrier has kicked in and you can see this large mass in the middle of the signals being transmitted. Now I'm just going to turn the bars off a minute just to make it a little bit easier to see. What you are seeing here is this. This area here, this mass you're seeing here is the video signal and the spikes you're seeing above that point is the remote control and goggles telemetry link data transmitting back and forth. So we're currently on channel eight for the video and the information from the remote and the goggles to the ear unit is also on channel eight. Every now and again, you will see a random packet appear just down here. It seems to be a communication packet. It's very rare, it doesn't happen very often. It's not triggered by doing anything. Going into the menu on the goggles doesn't trigger it. It just seems to be a latent packet that is sent, probably just a protocol just to make sure that the system is communicating properly. Now, if I just move this over to average mode, it might show this a little bit easier. That hump there is the main video mass with the little spikes on the top being the remote control link. If I put it onto peak hold, it shows it a little bit as well. So again, the video carrier is here with the remote control link on top. Now, what we'll do is change channel and show you the behavior of the system when we do that, because you will then observe something quite interesting. If we go into the goggles, we're currently on channel eight. And what I'm gonna do is jump down to channel six and you will see the system actually shift up. So if I put the markers back on, you'll see that we've moved out of channel eight and we're now up here on channel six. And again, you have the OFDM video signal with the remote and telemetry link being transmitted over the top. Now, the interesting behavior that you've just seen is all parts of the system remain on the same channel. The goggles, the remote, and the ear unit are all communicating on the same channel. They follow each other. Video is being transmitted from the ear unit back to the goggles, now on channel six. Goggles and remote are transmitting again on channel six back to the ear unit. And no matter what channel you do this on, it follows. So again, if I go down to channel four, you will see it shift down further down in the band. And again, you can see that they have followed each other. You've got the OFDM mass with the spikes being the transmission link from the system. Now, just to show you that that is that, if I move these two away, you'll see the spikes actually drop off to next to nothing. So if I just put these down below the desk, you're now seeing just the OFDM video mass rather than the remote control and telemetry spikes. Whereas if I now just bring the remote and pop the remote back, you can now see that the remote spikes are showing with that random packet again in the same place. And that interesting is that random packet is always in the same place on the band as well. And again, if I remove the remote away, you're then just seeing the video link. So in 25 megabits mode, video, telemetry and remote always remain on the same channel. They follow each other. So if you're flying on channel eight, they're all on channel eight. If you're flying on channel six, they're all on channel six. Now, the interesting thing is the system actually works differently in 50 megabits mode. And in 50 megabits mode, they actually separate. So what we're gonna do is first of all, go back to channel eight. And we're then gonna change the system over to 50 megabits mode. and show you now how that behaves. So right now we're on channel eight in 50 megabits mode. Now the first thing you'll notice is the carrier is actually still between the bars. And that is because in 50 meg mode, it doesn't actually go into 50 meg mode on public channel eight. You can only use 50 megabits mode on channel one, two or three. Channel eight will always be 25 megabits mode. And there is a reason why DJI have done this. What we're gonna do now, is separate it off onto one of the other channels. So we're gonna move down to channel two. You will then see the system move the video onto channel two, but this time the remote and telemetry link has stayed on channel eight. So whereas in 25 megabits mode, video 
and transmission from the remote and goggles follows each other, in 50 megabits mode they don't. No matter what channel you put the video on, 25 megabits, uh, in 50 megabits mode, control always remains on public channel 8 and never follows it around. Now, if I just put it on peak hold, just to show you it a bit differently, here again, you can see the video mass on the left, and you can now see that this is much wider, and it's actually twice the width of the mass that we had for 25 megabits mode. You've got that random carrier that appears here, always in the same place, and then we've got our control carrier building up this mass here. If I do it to averaging, it'll show you it a little bit differently as well. So again, you can see the video carrier here. We've got that odd random carrier being transmitted down here, and then you've got the remote carrier down here and if we go back to normal you can see it in real time showing you it transmitting. Now this behavior is quite interesting because it explains why we see some of the behavior that we've had with it knocking the system out when it first turns on. If you have multiple people trying to fly in 25 megabits mode as long as they're all on different channels everything should be okay. The systems should behave in the sense of they shouldn't knock each other out all of the time. However, if you're trying to fly multiple aircraft in 50 megs mode, whilst you can put the video on separate channels, the remotes and the telemetries will all remain on that channel 8 between the bars as you can see there. Now there is still talk of people actually having it knock out other users in 25 meg mode and there is I think two reasons for that. The first is this random carrier because we don't fully know what this random carrier does. If I go back into peak hold it will transmit randomly again in a second and it may have something to do with confirming that the link is in place and what I have noticed is the system always transmits that random carrier on that same position. It hasn't actually done it yet, um, but it is interesting to see and we're, gonna, we're not 100% sure how that random carrier behaves. You can now see that that random carrier has appeared. So again, it might be something to do with that, or it may be related to this power on behavior that I'm gonna take a look at in a moment. But it is interesting when you do see it on the display like this. So if we go back to normal, again, you can see we got the cut remote and transmitter on channel eight and then the video there. And again, if I move the video now down to channel one, you'll see the video's moved just off screen. It is literally just there, but again, you still have that remote link on channel eight at all times. And again, if I move back to channel eight, you'll see the video and the remote appear together on the same link. Now, as I've said, this only happens in 50 megs mode and in 25 megs, they follow each other around. Now, one other thing I just wanna mention on 50 megabits mode is whilst I've shown you that video goes onto one channel. So if we put it back to peak hold, we've got video and the remote always remains on channel eight. I have observed it randomly actually put the remote on top of the video channel. However, it's like one in a hundred boots that I've seen it do this. I've not been able to observe it enough to actually be 100% confident it's a actual behavior, but it has done it randomly every now and again. What we don't know is how often it does that in real world use. For instance, if we go back to averaging mode, you can see again, we've got the remote signal here and video here, or if we go to normal, you can see it a lot easier, but it isn't something I've been able to make happen all of the time. It seems to be completely random, and what will happen is I'll now and again reboot the system and it will do it. So for instance, if I just try it again now, we've powered off, power back on, and we'll just see what it does. It'll power back onto channel eight and then it should shift down to channel three because we're in 50 megs. So again, we've powered to channel eight. You can see the big signal, you heard the beeps, and then any second now it will move. There we go, boom. But again, this time it's left that signal there. So I really don't know what that's about, but it is some behavior I wanted to mention because it does happen. So it should be mentioned as part of the behavior, but on bench testing and testing out and about, 
the behavior I've showed you on the bench is the overall primary behavior of the system in my experience. Now, moving over to talking about power on behavior, because there's some interesting things here as well. Now, the system always powers on to channel eight, no matter what setting you have the goggles on. It will then move to the desired channel you've set after between one and three seconds. If you've got it set on channel eight, it will remain on channel eight. But if you've got it set on channel three, for instance, it will power up on eight and then move to three slightly afterwards. Then there is also an interesting bit of behavior with the system. And when I mean the system, I'm talking about the ear unit blasts out a full power RF boost and then reduces to the desired output. It almost blasts out at what looks to be 1200 milliwatts for about a second, second and a half, and then drops down to your desired output after it's also chose the correct channel. So just to show you this, first of all, in public channel eight, because what you'll see in channel eight is it go to the high level of output and then go back down to the lower level of output. But again, this comes from the ear unit and not the goggles and the remote. So to show this, I'm just gonna put these two over here a second. So you have a reduction on the display of what we're seeing on the scope. I'm gonna put it on peak hold just so you can see how it looks on the display. I've currently got it set to 25 milliwatts. So what we're gonna do is power off the ear unit. We're gonna put it onto average because it's a good way of showing it. And what we'll now see is it power on. And what you'll see is the signal come up to a very high level and then reduce to the 25 milliwatt that I've got it set to. So we're gonna plug it in. We're going to stay on channel eight. So you're going to see that video mass appear. Here it comes as it connects. And you can see it go right up to about the. So if I just put the marker there a minute, you can see it. And then you will see it drop down to the 25 milliwatt output that I have set it to. Now, it does this at all times when you power the system on. It doesn't matter if you're in CE or FCC mode. In my tests, it always kicks right up to 1200 and then backs down to the setting no matter what you do. So just to show that again, we're gonna power it off, wait for the signal to go down, power it back on, wait for the signal to kick in. you'll see it then kick right up on this mass. And again, I'm just gonna put the marker there so you can see where the top is. And then if we take a look at the display, after a second or two, you'll see it drop down to that 25 milliwatt output. Now that is part of the reason this system can knock other users out of the sky. Because for instance, if other users are in 50 megs mode, their remote and their telemetry is on channel eight. The system always boots on channel eight and it is booting to maximum output. So you're getting a big blast of RF energy at the start and that's gonna completely overwhelm the link from the telemetry in the remote that other users might have around you. Now, just to show you its behavior when you power it up and you have a different channel set, what we'll do is bring the remote and goggles back up. So we've moved it off channel eight, we've got it on channel three, and we're gonna power it up again. So what we're gonna do is plug it in. And what you will now see this time again is it power up in channel eight at max output, and then it will actually move off eight onto the separate channel. So again, we've seen it come up in channel eight. The system will connect, and you will then see it move over to the different channel, which is over here, which is the video channel. Again, our telemetry link though has remained on channel eight. So what you can see is when you power the system up, it will always end up on channel eight to start on that high level output and then shift over to the desired channel. And if we go back to normal, you can see it just like that there. Now, if we do the same in non 50 meg mode, just to show it, Set back to 50 meg mode, and we're then going to change the channel. And power down. 
we'll again fire it up. We'll see the system and we're on channel six now. Power back up on channel eight. There we go. And you will then see it in a second or two shift over to channel six. And again, it's brought that telemetry and remote link with it over to channel six as well. If we just show that same on averaging mode, because it's a bit easier to see on averaging mode. So again, we'll wait for it to power down. Power it on. And again, in average mode, you will see that high output appear again on, on the output. So again, channel eight firing right up. And I'm just going to put my pen there just to show it. So that's where it fired up on channel eight. And then you can see it move over and go back down on the actual channel it's on, which is channel six. And again, we've got the remote and telemetry over the top. Just to quickly show you this as well on a different device, this is the Y-Spy DBX uh, Wi-Fi analyzer with their channelizer software. And this allows us to visualize it slightly differently. If we now power up the goggles in 25 megabits mode, you can see that they increase up to this high level power and you can see the large mass of signal appear. And then as the power reduces down to that lower level, you'll see that filling darker red in the middle. But the interesting thing is this shows is that much higher level of power at the start of the unit firing up and then dropping down to the actual power output that you've got it set to. And just to be clear, this isn't low power mode. This is the actual power output, 25 milliwatts, that I've got the goggles set to itself. If we show the same 25 megabits mode again, but this time showing you it switching channel, what you can see is you fire the system on, you will then see it again build up that mass on the initial channel and then move itself over to the actual channel that you've got the goggles set to, then have that reduction in the output to the actual power that you've set it to. Now, just to jump over to showing you this in 50 megabits mode, just to explain how this waterfall image works, the longer the signal is visible, the different color will be shown. So for instance, very short bursts will be in blue, medium in yellow, and long solid signals, so a signal that comes on and stays on, will be in red or deep red. So as you can see, we've just fired the goggles back up in 50 megs, and you can see now that it's filled up that very high power signal, and you can even see the actual overspill of the signal either side, and then in the middle you can see the red bit appearing, which is the signal having started at that high level with the green stops, and then reduced back down to that red section where the signal settles after it's powered up. But what you're actually seeing is the system output on maximum output, which I've calculated to be about the 1200 milliwatts, and then reduce down to the lower level whatever you have it set to on the system. Then if we look above it, you can see these blue marks. They are simply the telemetry and radio link on top of the signal. The reason they're not darker is they're very fast switching moving signals, so they're leaving very faint traces. But the reason they're staying there is because they are continuously happening. They're just not staying in one solid place to allow the waterfall to fill out. Now, one last thing I just want to show you is how the different power levels look as you scroll through them. So at the moment, we're at 25 milliwatts in 50 megabits mode. The behavior of this doesn't change what mode we're in, but this is 25 milliwatts. If we then increase it to 500, you'll see that the mass will increase and you'll see the overall noise floor come up as well. As we then move up through 700 milliwatts, you can see that it fills in red much more. And we're then heading right up to the 1200 milliwatts where you can see the power come right up and it is a much larger mass overall. And then we'll drop back down to 25 milliwatts just to show you the massive difference in how the signal actually looks. Okay, so just to quickly summarize, in 25 megabits mode, video, telemetry, and RC link remain on the same channel. No matter what channel you move it to, 
all of them move together and they remain on that individual channel. The RC link isn't FHSS as such, it remains within the channel that you've selected in the goggles. In 50 megabits mode though, things are a little bit different. Whilst you can choose a different channel for the video, the telemetry and the remote link tends to stay on channel 8 at all times. As I've said, I have observed it move, but the normal behavior for it is that it remains on channel 8. I suspect it can move if there's interference, but the default behavior is channel 8 at all times. Now, this is also explaining why we're seeing people have problems with their system going into failsafe when someone powers it on. Because as we observed, when you first power on the FPV system, it always powers onto channel 8, and it gives a high output burst of RF and then drops down to a lower power level. This, if someone else is in 50 megs mode, is going to completely overload the link from their goggles and remote and cause them to enter failsafe. Now that high output boost does come from your drone, not the goggles or the remote, but it does have an effect. And when you're flying in 50 megs mode, or you have a group of people flying in 50 megs mode, you do need to make sure that there's plenty of separation between you. Flying in 25 megs mode should be okay, but what is interesting is that single random carrier that you see that always remains on the same channel. And if you do have multiple systems flying, it is gonna be interesting to see if that is part of the reason we've seen people have problems as well. Now that is pretty much it for today's video but I do want to say some big thank yous before we wrap this one up. The first is to AIM TTI. They have very kindly lent me this scope and I would not have been able to make today's video without it. Really thank you to them. I will be making a couple of videos on this in the near future, giving you guys an overview of this product, as well as talking about some of the use cases for it as well. And you're, if you're interested in seeing that, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and hit the little bell next to it as well. I also want to say a big thank you to Metageek for sending me over this Wi-Fi analyzer. This allowed us to look at that high output at the start a little bit differently compared to the scope and just visualize it in a different way. And again, I will put links to both of these companies in the description of this video as well. I'm really interested in what you guys have think about what you've seen here today. Now, that is pretty much it. I'm really interested in what you guys think about what you've seen. Please do put your feedback and comments below and I will try and answer any questions you may have. If you'd like to support the channel, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Also, there are links to Patreon as well as buy me a coffee there as well. That's it for this one. Please do stay safe and I will be releasing the uh, overview of these in the very near future.